All right, here we go. So in part two, we're going to work through an ABC costing example. And the first step is going to be to assign costs to our cost pools using what's called first stage allocation. Here are the three steps as I see them in ABC. The first step is multiply. The second step is going to be divide. And the third step is going to be multiply again. So we're going to first start talking about this first stage allocation, which is step one, which is multiply. We're going to take our cost times the applicable percentage that's given. to equal the cost allocated to each pool. Then in our second step, we're going to have to get our overhead rates, kind of like our predetermined overhead rate. So we're going to take the estimated overhead in each pool divided by the estimated driver or activity for each pool. That's going to give us our rate, our activity rate for each pool. And then the third step is to multiply, which is what we would have done in traditional costing. We're going to figure out our applied overhead by taking our rate for each pool times the actual activity. Because there will be multiple pools, we're going to have to do these steps multiple times but all it is is math. So we're going to fill up our buckets with step one by taking the costs and multiplying by the applicable percentages given. Then we're going to figure out our rates for each of those buckets by taking the estimated overhead in each pool divided by the driver. Then we're going to apply the overhead to our products by taking the rate for each pool times the actual activity that our product utilizes. And we're going to have to do that multiple times and then finally add it all together to get our total overhead applied. So it's just really math. So the overhead costs for Baxter Company are given here. You can see we have a series of different overhead costs. The overhead costs include both manufacturing and non-manufacturing. The non-manufacturing costs, remember, would not be included under traditional costing. We'd only be including direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead in our products. Here, we're including manufacturing and non-manufacturing overhead costs. So we have some general admin costs and marketing costs included as well under ABC. All that's given to us. Direct materials, direct labor, and shipping aren't included on the list because those can be directly traced to our products or customer orders. So we don't need to do any allocation. We know exactly how much direct materials, direct labor, and shipping costs would be used for each of our orders or each of our products. So just like with direct materials and direct labor, those in traditional costing are traced directly to each job. The same is true with ABC. In addition, ABC also includes delivery costs, which wouldn't be included under traditional costing because it's not a product cost. So then we get to this slide, which looks intimidating, but I promise you it's not. It's just the percentage of each of these costs that we're going to allocate to each bucket. So as an example, indirect factory wages, 30% of that is going to go to customer orders, 30% design, 20 order size, 10 customer relations, and 10 we have no clue, so we shove it in other and we don't allocate it. Notice that the totals are always 100 because we got to allocate 100% of the cost to our various buckets, including this other, which is where we put what we have no clue. So if we there's no relationship with any driver, we put it in other and we don't allocate it. This is the hard part for companies to determine figuring out these percentages. The easy part is what we're going to do, which is just the math. So to do the allocation, our indirect factory wages is $6 million. That again was given. And then we multiply by the percentage that goes into customer orders. So if I go back to the previous slide, we could see the 30% that's being used is right there. 
So we take the 6 million times 30% and 1.8 million would go to the customer order bucket out of the indirect factory wages. Then we move on to factory equipment depreciation. Again, I'm going to go back a few slides just to show you. Here's the 20% that we determined should get allocated to customer orders. So then we do the math down at the bottom here and we put in the 20%. So allocating the overhead to the bucket, effectively what I like to call filling up our buckets, is very easy. You just take the overhead cost times the applicable percentage that's given. On an exam or quiz, we're not going to give you anywhere near as many buckets and different types of costs because it would be way too time consuming. But in the reality, in the real world, you're going to have, in order for ABC to be effective, multiple different types of costs and multiple different buckets and percentages. But all you got to do is the math and you're able to fill up your buckets. So that's what was done for us. Basically went through that same process for each line item and each cost pool and we filled up each of our buckets. This 22,000 is important if we go back where well, we can just look right here. The total overhead costs are 22000 so once we do all of our allocation, we better end up with 22000 as our total overhead cost when we add up each of our buckets. That just means that we didn't make a mathematical error. Now what do we do? Well, we filled up our buckets, so the next thing we're going to have to do is figure out the rate we're going to use to apply overhead for each of these buckets. So... In order to compute the activity rate, we're going to need to know the driver that is being utilized for each of these activities. So the ABC tells us they've determined, the ABC team rather, has determined that Baxter Battery will have these total activities for the cost pools, 1,000 customer orders, 4,000 design changes, 800,000 machine hours, and 2,000 customers served. These are all estimates, remember. It's no different than under traditional costing. We need to calculate these ABC rates at the beginning of the year because we're going to need to allocate overhead throughout the year in order to have cost information to make decisions. We can't wait till the actual costs are known because by then it'll be too late to make decisions. Now that we have those drivers, we're able to calculate our rate. So we take our customer order total that's in the bucket divided by the driver, which is the number of orders. And we do that for each of our buckets with the exception of other. Other would include the organization sustaining costs that aren't assigned to products or customers. So we don't assign the other cost pool. All the other cost pools have a rate, and we're going to use those rates to apply the overhead to our products or our customers. Again, all we're doing in this step is dividing. Estimated overhead over estimated activity. It's no different than what we learned in Chapter 2 and 3, except instead of doing it once or twice, in this example, we're doing it four times. Because we have four different buckets that get allocated. So, as a reminder, direct materials, direct labor, and shipping costs are going to be traced directly to our cost object. Our cost object can be products, a customer order, or the customer itself. And then our overhead costs are going to get allocated first in first stage allocation. We're going to take our overhead costs and fill up our various activity buckets. Then we're going to, in second stage allocation, use our rates for each of the buckets to apply the overhead to the cost object based on the actual activity utilized by that cost object. The cost object, again, remember way back to, I think it was probably chapter one, is any thing that we want to get cost information for. So it'll be product lines, it could be customer orders or individual customers. So how do we assign the cost to the cost object? Well, it's quite simple. We're going to take our rates times the actual activity. So Baxter Battery gave us the following information. The sure start requires no new design resources. 800,000 batteries are ordered with 4,000 separate orders. Each sure start requires 36 minutes of machine time for a total of 480,000 machine hours. Long life requires new design resources. 
400,000 batteries are ordered with 6,000 separate orders. 4,000 custom designs are prepared. Each long life requires 48 minutes of machine time for a total of 320,000 machine hours. So this is effectively our actual activity. So we're going to take those rates that we discussed and multiply it by the actual activity. So for sure start, we take our activity rates for customer order design and order size. Notice we're not including customer level activity. The reason for that is we never include customer level of activity when assigning cost to a product. So let me write that down because it's so important. We never include customer level activity when assigning cost to a product. Why is that the case? Well, because you don't need a customer to make the product. So we don't assign any customer service to the product itself because what we're trying to do is figure out the cost of making that product. Then when we try to figure out the customer profitability will include those customer level costs because those costs are incurred in servicing our individual customers. So we're going to take the customer design, design change, and order size cost pools, take the rate in each one, and multiply by the actual activity. So this is just like in chapter 2 and 3 where we take our POHR times our actual activity. We're just doing it multiple times. Notice for the sure starts, there are no design changes, so none of the costs from that cost pool get allocated to that particular product line. Whereas there is a significant number of design changes when it comes to the long life battery, so a lot of the costs will get assigned to the long life. So when you're done, you take your rate times your activity and then you add it all together to get the total overhead cost that is applied to each product. So again, it's like we, we did in chapter two and three, we take our POHR times actual activity, but we're doing it multiple times, and then we add it together. It's very similar to when we use the POHR in each department. We allocate it overhead for each department, then we added it together to get the total overhead applied. And then at the bottom, we have a reconciliation, the 4928, the 7832, and then 9240 not assigned equals that 22 total. Where they get the 9240, that's going to be the other as well as the customer service. So let's go back so I can prove it to you. Way back. So our other and our customer relations cost, those combined would be the cost that we don't allocate to our product. So 3080 plus 6160 is 9240. So that's 9240000. And if we go back to where we left off, there's the 9240 at the bottom here. So that's just a reconciliation, again, making sure that we've done our math appropriately. So we've allocated all costs aside from the other and customer level. So if we add up the costs that we've allocated and then add those costs not assigned, we arrive back at the original $22 million we started with. If we want to assign overhead costs to an individual customer, we're going to consider all the activity used by that one customer. So we're going to take a look at Baxter Battery uh, and their customer Acme Auto Parts, who placed a total of 12 orders and four orders for long lives required a design change. So our orders, we had eight orders for 60 sure line starts per order, and then four orders for 50 long lives per order. And the 480 sure starts required 288 machine hours, and the 200 long lives required 160 machine hours. So that's our actual activity that we're going to use to apply overhead. 
So we take our activity rates for each of our buckets. Notice now we're including the customer relations bucket because we're no longer assigning cost to a product. We're assigning it to our customer. So for customer orders, the rate was 452 and there was 12 different orders between both products that they ordered. We had four design changes and our order size is based on machine hours. So we used a total of 448 machine hours for both of the products that they ordered. And then customer relations is based on the number of customers because we're assigning our cost to one individual customer. That's where the one driver comes from for our customer relations cost pool. So we do the same process that we did when we applied overhead to a product line. We're going to take our predetermined overhead rate and multiply it by our driver, our actual activity, to figure out our ABC costs allocated to that individual customer. And then we add it together to get our total costs allocated. In our next segment, we're going to talk about how we use this information to figure out the profitability of various products that we produce, as well as figuring out the profitability of individual customers. Both are extremely important in business. If we're making multiple products, we want to make sure our resources are going to the most profitable products that we're creating. If we find through appropriate cost allocation that some of our products are losing money, we may either decide to figure out how to save costs in order to make it profitable, or we may decide the best course of action is to drop the product altogether. In order to make a good decision, we need to have good information, and that's what ABC costing is hopefully providing us, better information to make decisions. Likewise, we may have some customers that are more needy than others, so we want to see how profitable each of our customers are. If we have some customers that aren't really profitable, we may want to consider stopping to do business with them because it really doesn't make sense to take on customers that are costing us money. The whole goal of being in business is to make profits. So we want to make sure that not only all of our products are profitable, but each of the customers that we are interacting with are also profitable for the business.